Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Right, Monday lunchtime here in Australia, and we have seen a big sell-off. So at the moment, it's five point six percent. So obviously, it's sort of you know Sunday evening, sort of uh, stateside time. So has the market now reverted back to sell-offs over the weekends and pumping during the week? Because it definitely shows a pattern, but these patterns only last so long. So for quite some time, that's what was happening, uh, particularly sort of earlier this year and late last year, pumping during the week, selling off during the weekend. Then a couple of months ago, it changed. It had pumped during the week and it had sell off during the weekends. Uh, yeah, pumping during the week, uh, sorry, dumping through the week and pumping through the weekends. And now, does it look like it's reverted back to what it was before? We'll have to wait and see. But the markets are due to open up sort of Monday morning. So that's in a few hours time. Again, we're talking stateside time. Is that when we're going to see the uh, the bounce back of the market? Or is there more to worry about? We'll dive into that and have a look shortly. But look, 5.6% down. That's a pretty big move for the crypto markets. Because you got to remember that's total market cap individual coins i mean look at this 11 percent four or five percent and some of them are going to be much worse i can tell you right now bitcoin dominance nearly getting up to 42 percent people are feeling safer in bitcoin at the moment than in the altcoins because they really do just keep kind of getting wrecked volume is up uh and gas prices up as well so people you know juggling around moving between uh different things on ethereum stable coins and all the rest of it but let's have a look right it's probably going to be pretty hard, but I reckon there might be an outlier or two. What's done the best in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? There we go. Cello up, Audius up, near protocol. There's always a couple of outliers. Uh, Phantom, Adam still makes some uh, moves up, which is nice. But then we're basically getting into the stable coins. So there's only like six coins in the top 100 that have had, that have had positive price action and everything else is negative. So one nice double digit and then a couple of uh, mid to low single digit gains. All right, well, here comes the brutal part then. Remembering the market's down over 5.5%, so 5.6% in total. What in the top 100 has performed the worst? Whew, there we go. Luna, EOS, HBAR, Runethorn, Sol, uh, Icon, e, uh, Elrond. Harmony, I mean, double digit losses. Look at that. All basically all across, not all across the board, but we've got a number of double digit losses and then plenty of high single digit losses. So things aren't looking so pretty in the market. What do we do? Well, number one, let's go have a look at the daily chart. We start with a kind of more, you know, in between micro and macro. I mean, day is still, I would call, kind of micro. Uh, I would say macro is more the weekly to monthly to yearly. But again, just chopping and changing. Nothing has really changed at the moment. So things are still the same. You know, we'll pump up and we'll get as high as $52,000 and then we'll drop down and we'll get as low as, what's that, about $42,500. So $42,800 ish thereabouts. And currently we're at $45,600. So chopping and changing, like I said. There is a whole lot of, I mean, it's not just market manipulation. Some of it definitely is, but it's also the big players. They really are playing mind games with you at the moment. Something we also need to keep in mind. This is all the Septembers going back as far as 2013. So there was, I think, another two Septembers before this in the Bitcoin charts. Uh, and I think two of those were green. But generally, the Septembers are red. Red September. Following September's red. We then had two greens uh, for September's in 2015, 2016, and they weren't really big green months. This was almost a spinning top, uh, pretty much is really. And then it's red again, then it's red again, then it's red again, then it's red again. And hey presto, look where we are, it's red. And we've only got about a week left of September. Now this could still easily change, but maybe we are going to have to come back down uh, a little bit lower. Plan B. Uh, this is something he put out uh, in uh, late August, but he was saying 43K in September. That's kind of where he sees uh, the base, and it could be down as low as that. 
We go over to the stock to flow. And this is what I'm trying to say, is there are big players currently here, and they all know that this will likely play out. Now, we need to remember that. It's only likely. Nothing is guaranteed in life, but this will likely play out. But they are going to do everything they can, the big players. And it's not just institutions. It's even the whales because now their secret is out. And even they know that now everyone knows what's going to happen with Bitcoin. In my personal opinion, never financial advice. I must always reiterate that. How is it all of a sudden Bitcoin is going to go into a bear market before it even gets to something that really should be a bare minimum, which is, you know, 100k? It's because big money is here. They know where this is going. The big players now know that the big money is here and they know that it's going to be hard to shake out the other big players. It's going to be a whole lot easier to shake out the small players, the small fry. And I don't like to consider myself a small fry, just, I'm, just like I'm sure you don't. But unfortunately, that is the truth. We are the little guppies swimming in with the big whales and things like that. And so they'll do everything. They... They've got enough money that they can generally hold for a lot longer than we can. But that depends on how you have positioned yourself. If you've put too much in and you just can't hold and you have to sell, then you're probably overstretched uh, from the start. The big players generally don't come in and just throw everything. They're lucky that they have a lot of money. But once upon a time, somewhere started with not, not a lot of money and they had to play the smart game. And the smart game is... Put in what you can afford to, you know, they say lose, but I don't understand why you'd really put in something that you think you could lose, uh, particularly if uh, it was on the high end. Now, cryptocurrencies, depending on who you talk to, can be quite dangerous. I think many of them are if you get way outside the top 100, but even some inside the top 100. But if you've done your research, I think it, you know, crypto is here to stay. It really is just about finding the good ones. And as long as you're in Bitcoin, my personal opinion is you're probably going to be fine. And that will go up. But if you put so much into it that when it goes down, you have to sell, you over you overstressed yourself. The big players aren't doing that. Say if they've got $100 million, they don't put $100 million into Bitcoin unless they are just degenerate gamblers. Some might, but they're the ones that will probably get wrecked. But if they had $100 million and they believed in sort of Bitcoin, at least to an extent, you know, weren't like full believers, otherwise they might go full uh, $100 million into Bitcoin. But they're believers. They'll probably take $20 million of that. So like a fifth, maybe even a little bit less, maybe $10 million of it. And they'll play around with that. And so even if Bitcoin went to zero by some you know, unforeseeable thing coming, they can survive. So the little guys, unfortunately, we tend to come in and we just go really hard all in and generally at bad times. And then when the market moves in the opposite direction, we sell. And that's how these big guys continue to make money because they end up buying your Bitcoin at cheaper prices. So the name of the game is to know how much you can afford, Know whether it's going to make a difference to, you know, your kind of at least short term future because long term it should. And again, nothing is ever guaranteed in life, but it should make a really good difference to your lifestyle in the future. But if you've overcapitalized yourself and can't take the volatility, then you're probably going to end up selling at a loss. And that's how they're going to beat you. So the aim of the game is to buy when it's going down. That's the best time to buy. Well, actually, the best time to buy is when it's at at its absolute bottom but it's hard to find its absolute bottom and when I say buy when it goes down I don't mean if you know if you're buying at the top you don't want to buy two seconds after it's hit the top but when it's at a good discount from an old top if it's around about sort of 50 percent I generally think that's a great time to start getting in again you don't throw everything because it could go lower so is bitcoin currently at the best price it could be I don't know that's a really hard call but I look at this and I think yeah it probably is at a good price. At its best price? No, I don't know. But can we guarantee that, let's say Bitcoin goes to $300,000, $400,000, like some people say it's going to. Do you think it'll come back to $40,000 if it goes that high? I don't think it will. So this may be a really good price and may be the best price. It's hard to know. Again, get your positions. You want to buy when things are at a discount and you want to sell when they're at all-time highs. But unfortunately, that means you have to be able to hold through some of the bad volatility, i.e. to the downside. That's a really hard thing to do. But for me, I just look at this. I think Plan B's uh, stock-to-flow model is going to play out. Is it going to play out exact? No. 
but it is going to play out very similar to this over time. It just might not be this year. It might take three years for it to actually break 100,000. That's the truth. The big players are here. They've seen this. They know everyone else has generally seen this. They know it's going to go there, but they can do all these kind of tricks and things. And again, not just institutions, although they are you know, famous for doing that, but just the big whales in the space. They know how to shake you out. They've been here for a long time. They've got a lot of money for a reason now. Not all whales and all institutions are the smartest people ever, but a lot of them are. That's why they work for institutions. So you've got to be able to be sort of smarter than them. Now, does that mean you'll get the same percentage gains? No, that's probably going to be pretty hard to do because they're trained professionals, but you can play the smart longer game. You may not get the same returns as them, but you can still get life-changing returns. And that's by buying low in a good project and you just hold until you think is a good time to sell. But when you sell, make sure you're selling with... uh, a good idea of what you're going to do with that don't sell just for the sake of selling what, what you know if bitcoin's going to continue to go up for let's say forever but you know with the volatility well what are you selling it for have you actually found something better to do with that money and again if it's going on a holiday because you need to treat yourself or something whatever but don't sell good assets simply because you think you have to there's got to be a reason for it. You need the cash for something. You've found something better, you know, to invest in. Or again, you know, you want to buy a house. There is definitely reasons to sell. But a lot of people get caught up and think, oh, well, you know, I'm in profit, so I've got to sell. No, you don't. You don't have to sell until there's a reason to sell. So we all need to make sure we have a plan. And it is really hard to beat the institutions, as in truly beat them, you know, Uh, about selling at better times and then getting into better prices but you can play a very similar game just on a smaller scale be smart buy when things are on discounts sell when things are at highs but again if it's the right time to sell if there's a reason for selling bitcoin's been the best performing asset you know anyone's ever known now other things are coming that will likely beat bitcoin but they don't have 10 years of history to prove that yet Hence why Bitcoin is your safest bet. And I personally think you should have, and again, not financial advice, just complete personal opinion, 30% Bitcoin. Just in case your other ones are wrong, you've got that hedge. You always should have a hedge unless you are, again, sort of like a maxi or a full believer. And maybe it's in Solana. And if it is, then you've probably done really well, Uh, whatever it may be. But you've got to play the smart game. There's a lot of things that are going to happen to try and try and shake you out and again even i got sucked in i bought xrp at 21 cents which was pretty cheap and i got myself a really good bag and a panic sold at 19 cents that was almost the exact bottom i think it went down to 17 cents so two cents cheaper and then i rebought it all not all of it a whole lot less actually but i bought back in at about 68 cents because i realized i'd made the mistake and had to wait for another dip and I've bought more since 68 cents. But if I was still holding all that XRP that I got at 21 cents and had bought more at 19 cents, I would be so well off by now. And I'm not trying to sing the praises of XRP or any coin really for that matter, other than Bitcoin. You've got to make your own decision. But we're all learning lessons. I won't make those mistakes again. You know, I believe XRP is going to make it. And I've got a story about Ripple over here. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to move on. But these are the reasons why I'm not selling at the moment because I just don't believe this is the top. Can it go lower? Absolutely. And could it stay kind of low and travel sideways for another year or two with big players trying to shake everyone out? Absolutely. But in the end, I fundamentally believe in Bitcoin. I fundamentally believe in crypto. I think it's going to change the world. So I'm not selling at the moment. I don't panic. Well... Hard to say I don't panic sell when that's exactly what I did with XRP, but I really have learned my lesson. I won't do that again. Panic selling, it's part of the human psychology, and that is what they use in market psychology. They bet against human psychology at times. They know that if it gets down to about this point, that's probably going to be enough to shake people out. And hey, presto, look, it worked with me with XRP. All right. An ancient Bitcoin stash worth $30 million just moved. So Bitcoin that haven't moved around in a long time are starting to move. But we always get uh, reports like this, particularly uh, 
at inflection points. So on December 10th, 2012, this wallet received 616 Bitcoin. Now back then, Bitcoin was worth $13.30. Imagine picking up 600 uh, for $13. Now that totaled around about 8,000, just under $200. However, with the price today, 47,000, well, it's a little bit less now, 45,000, 45, but that was worth 29, that was, yeah, just from just the other day, worth $29 million. Where else can you put in $8,000 into something and basically a decade later, it'd be worth millions? There is not too many places that you can do that. But crypto is a place where that is happening more and more. But that's something I want you to remember. 2012, it's taken nearly a decade for that to happen. You're unlikely to put $8,000 into something and like a year later, have millions of dollars. I'm not saying it's impossible. It could happen. If you had to put $8,000 into Solana uh, January this year, you probably would have uh, well over a couple of million. I wouldn't be 29 million, but you probably have a million or $2 million. So it can be done. But you got to remember, a lot of that is sort of luck. It really is. There's a lot of luck involved to do it in that short amount of time. I'm not saying long term. But crypto is where things are happening. That's why I put my money where my mouth is and I really do plan on holding long term. Will I sell some, take some profits? Yes. Will I get it right and have it all done at the best times? No. Nah. And I've said this before. I don't need to have it done at the exact right time. I just go back to uh, what uh, the Rothschild said. I've never sold the top and I've never bought the bottom, but I made a lot of money in between. And that's exactly what I'm planning to do. And that is how the Rothschild, the original Rothschild, that's how he made a ton of money. He even, you know, he came out and that's his statement. He never sold the exact top, ever. He never bought the exact bottom, ever. But he made a whole lot of money in between and he set his families up for generations. And so my plan is to do, you know, I'd, I'd like to say exactly the same. That would be amazing. If I could do exactly the same as the Rothschilds, that would be great. But I'm going to do something similar. I'm not worried about buying, selling the exact top and I'm not worried about buying the exact bottom. I don't need to. But if I'm going to be somewhere in between in a market that has outperformed anything that we've ever seen before, I think I'm probably going to do quite well. I'll have some great winners and I'll have some pretty sad losers. That's the way it is. And I'm sure the Rothschild was exactly the same. Not everything he put his money into uh, won, but the ones that did win, he did extremely well. So we need to remember that. Last but not least, all right, Ripple say they have no plans to settle with the SEC over the XRP and they are confident Gensler will drop the lawsuit. So legal Ripple, sorry, legal team reportedly said they have no plans to settle with the securities watchdog. They are confident that SEC Chairman Gary Gensler will be convinced that pursuing the case is picking winners and losers in the crypto business to determine, uh, to the detriment, sorry, uh, of innovation. <sighs> so interesting, this case. And again, this is what shook me out. The, the SEC FUD is what... Yeah, shook me out. I, I got into XRP at 21 cents. I watched it go all the way to a dollar eighty, and I thought this is going to be amazing. And then when I saw it getting back down to the price that I bought it at, unfortunately, that's where I got shook out just under it. Bought it at 21 cents and sold it for 19 cents. So I sold at a loss and then bought back in at 68 cents and uh, 80 something cents, and I've bought more since then as well. But that is, you know. And I've been around in this space for a little while and I I should have known, but it was enough to even shake me out. Now, again, I won't make those mistakes in the future. The real smart people, you know, know how to get in and out uh, at much better times. I don't think I'm on that kind of level at the moment, but I do know that that wasn't the reason to get shaken out, but I did. All right, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Obviously, a big dip in the market at the moment, 5%. It could be going down further. Again, we do need to keep this in mind. September has traditionally been a bearish month. Now have a look at this uh, logarithmic chart and we've got the line that goes through the middle. We still are above this uh, general kind of trend line. So Bitcoin could technically go a whole lot lower. It could come down to 28,000-ish thereabouts and we still wouldn't really be bearish. I mean, that the bearish would be over by the time you got to there. It'd be hitting that mark where it should be going back up. But we need to keep this in mind. This is what Bitcoin 
has been doing, and it actually was before this, it went back to 2010, we just don't have the charts for it. This is Bitcoin's trajectory. Tell me why you wouldn't want to get on board this. And does it really matter if you get in, again, let's say you got here, 20,000. You would have had to have wait uh, December 2017 uh, to December 2020. So you would have had to wait three years for you to break even. But look where you are now. You've doubled your money and you were, and that's if you were just unlucky enough to buy at the exact top. If you had have bought anywhere sort of down here, maybe even lucky enough down here, down here, even more lucky enough to buy down here, you are so up in the money, it's not funny. What makes you think this is going to change anytime soon? Will we still get these same kind of big returns? Maybe not, but maybe we are about to hit that inflection point where things really do get crazy and maybe we see the biggest pump that Bitcoin may ever see because it gets that worldwide adoption. You know, these are the things you need to ask yourself. Now for me, I don't focus on the full negative or the full positive. I just focus on what I think the average is likely to be. And I think the average is likely to be this line. And I don't see this line stopping anytime soon. So, you know, you can draw this out to... Right, there we go. What's that, 26, roughly? Let's get this. Let's just keep this line going. And this is just a very average price. 1st of November, 2025. It should be worth about a half a million dollars at kind of the low point. It's not to say it can't break under here. It definitely could be lower. So again, you're worried about buying Bitcoin now at 40 something thousand. Could it go down to 20 something thousand? Absolutely. But if it keeps following this trajectory and it's only getting more and more adoption, not less adoption, why wouldn't it then be worth roughly half a million dollars by the 1st of November, 2025? That's three years away, ladies and gentlemen. Three years away. Well, sort of four-ish. Yeah, four years. It's only 2021. But in four years, imagine turning $45,000 into half a million dollars. You tell me where else you can do that. I don't know where, where else you can do that. All right, I won't take up too much more of your time. You know my stance, you know uh, my point of view. I'm guessing if you're watching this channel, you probably have a somewhat similar point of view. Maybe not exactly, but that's why I put my money in the crypto space. Could there be some really big, horrific black swan events? Yep, we went through one. That's one right there. Could we see something like this that makes crypto come again, maybe way down to here in the next sort of year or two? Absolutely but they don't last forever. No recession lasts forever. No depression lasts forever. They all eventually end and things revert back to their new mean. And this is, uh, revert back to their mean. This is our mean. I don't see this deviating too greatly. Again, in general from this, could we have some big ups? Yep, and some maybe big downs? Yep, but on average, this is where I see Bitcoin going. You wanna have a look at the dollar you pull this end up here and pull this end down here. And that's what the dollar's doing. It has times where it boosts back up and then it just drops back down again. Then it has times where it boosts back up and then it drops back down again. It's going in the opposite direction. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment. But the strong shall stand and the weak shall fall. I'll see you next time.